The boyfriend's testimony outweighed everything else, including Ella's own deathbed statement. This is Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and today is January 12th. This is a Sisyphean journal where primarily we observe the anniversaries of abortion deaths, both legal and illegal, to try to learn what we can to keep these things from happening again. Today, we are looking at the January 12th death of 19-year-old Ella Stamen. Now, Ella died at her family home near Mannheim in Penn Township, Pennsylvania. Her family published a death announcement saying that she had died from typhoid fever but all was not as it seemed. A man who used to be the family doctor and whose name I'm not going to be able to pronounce, Dr. Jacob H. starts with an S. I'm going to call him Dr. S. Dr. S., who had moved to York two years earlier, was placed on trial. Um, what was the charge? I don't know. Possibly murder in her death. Now I'm going to read the summary of the York County District Attorney, because it really um, captures everything very succinctly. On December 31st, 1901, Ella Stamen left her home in Mannheim and went to Lancaster and thence to York. Arriving there, she proceeded to the office of Dr. S., which she was seen to enter where the operation was performed. She returned to her home the same day. The next day, she worked about the house but complained of not feeling well, and the day following, she was confined to her bed. Dr. J.D. Hershey called, and while no diagnosis nor examination was made, he ascertained that the abdominal cavity was agitated to such an extent that peritonitis had set in. The girl gradually grew worse and sank lower and lower day by day. From the onset, her physicians told her that her condition was dangerous, and on Saturday, January 11th, she knew she was going to die. This she told Monroe Todd, who was paying attention to her, and asked for a minister to receive spiritual consolation. Lower she sank, and on Sunday morning, about 5.30 o'clock, she died. She was between 19 and 20 years of age. An autopsy was held. This revealed the delicate organs of the abdominal cavity to be in a highly inflamed state and enlarged. Peritonitis was advanced and the wound contained two punctures, one of which was gangrenous and which could only have been caused by the introduction of some instrument. Shortly before she died, and with the fear of death upon her, she made a statement in writing before a notary public in which she said that Dr. Jacob H. S. had performed an operation upon her for abortion. So, in her deathbed statement, Ella had recounted her journey to York, described the instruments the doctor had used, and um, elaborated on the description that he gave of how the procedure would be performed. And she told about returning home at about seven o'clock that evening. Ella's devastated mother testified. She said that Ella had left home in the morning of December 11th and returned that e sorry, December 31st and returned that evening. And she described Ella's decline and how Dr. Hershey was called in. And Dr. J.F. Dunlop, Dunlap came to assist in Ella's care. And she told about how the day before Ella's death, Dr. Dunlap told her in Ella's presence that there was no hope. Ella was going to die. And Dr. Hershey testified both to attending Ella in her final illness and to the autopsy, which he helped to perform. Now, Monroe Todd had been keeping company with Ella for about six months. He had driven her the mile or so from Mannheim to her home on December 31st, and he recounted that Ella had told him not to drive so fast because she was feeling ill. Now, Monroe Todd testified that the day before Ella died, she'd spent some time alone with him, and the two had conversed in both German and English. She told him that she knew she was dying, and she told him that she had performed the abortion herself. 
And evidently, Monroe Todd's carried uh, testimony carried more weight with the jury than Ella's dying declaration, signed and notarized and made in the presence of both Dr. Hershey and Ella's family, in addition to the notary who took the statement. Um, and I'm thinking that the fact that this doctor was a very highly respected doctor in the town might have had something to do with the fact that they chose to acquit him. Like, share, subscribe. I would like to go to York County and read the trial transcripts and find out for myself exactly what happened. And if it was this doctor who killed Ella, how was he able to get away with it?